And we pray, O oh Lord, that today hearts and lives will be open to the precious understanding that we are loved far more than we can understand. We've been given, forgiven far greater than we know. And God, we're made accepted in the body of Christ. Bless today, we pray. <coughs> Bless Jerusalem, we pray, O oh God, protect and keep it. Yes, Israel, O oh Lord, we pray for even now. The knowledge of the Messiah, Jesus yes, Christ, may fill the land. We pray today for our president, for our governor, for the mayor of our city, our city council. Lord, for uh, our judiciary and our legislative bodies. Thank you, Lord. God, cause believers in every rank of every department to rise up and begin to speak truth and righteousness in a more powerful way than ever before. God, may the glow of your presence be seen throughout our land and the world in the name of Jesus. We pray today, O oh Lord, for um, our, our churches around the world, for pastors stand and they speak in a thousand different languages. God, your grace and your work. Would you open hearts and lives to receive the engrafted word of God whereby people may grow. We pray for military families separated from their loved ones, assigned all over the world. We pray for those precious ones serving under arms, God, that you will minister to them. Most of all, keep them safe, but bring them to a saving knowledge of Christ. And for those families especially who have lost loved ones in the war, God, would you be their comfort and peace as only you can. And God, may your name be exalted. May your will be done in the precious holy name of Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Come, let us uh, make a declaration of faith together, Brother Art. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, let's declare this together. Today, we, we celebrate, celebrate the Lord, Lord and we have his hope. God is living among us. He rejoices over us with gladness. With his love, he calms all our fears. He rejoices over us with joyful songs. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls, reaching right to the very presence of God. And because of this hope, we are able to live our lives in ways that help others prepare for eternity. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. You guys are awesome. If nobody's told you today, you're awesome. And I love you. Sometimes you just got to be told I love you. Man, that's right. <laughs> We're in the house of the Lord this morning, where the love flows freely. I've got a couple of announcements for you, and then I'll get out of your hair. We've got a mystery dinner theater that we would uh, that we're thinking about putting on, but we want to see who's interested. If you are interested in uh, volunteering for that, or serving, or helping out with this mystery dinner theater, what you can do is you can get a hold of us at the information center in the back on the way out, and we will get you signed up. You can ask all the questions that you need, and we'll be able to help you out with that. Also, we've got some new life groups that are starting next Sunday on the table back there next to our missions wall. And to sound booth, you can sign up for a life group. And I'll tell you what, life group is an awesome way to get plugged in. It's an awesome way to get connected. It's an awesome way to build relationships with your fellow brothers and sisters in the house. And most of the life groups have food, okay? So I don't know about y'all, but that, I'm just saying, that's like, okay, you got food? I'm there. <laughs> but it's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, you kids, you guys may be uh, dismissed. You may be dismissed for Kids Church. You can go see Eileen back there in the back corner. You guys have fun. But not too much fun because I'm not back there. So, <laughs> so yeah, life groups. Um, I, I really encourage you guys to get plugged into a life group, get involved. It's so much fun. We have a blast. And this series that is coming up is by Judah Smith. I believe still Judah Smith, correct? No? That's all right. It's going to be good either way. Show up to life group. We're going to have some fun. <laughs> Also, Good News Club, um, it, it starts up here at school. Uh, as the school starts up, we're going to be introducing the Good News Club again. And we need volunteers for that. If you have any more uh, questions or you need some information, you can see us at the information center on the, in the back on the way out as well. And our students are returning to school this Monday. So pray for them. Pray for their parents that they just won't go crazy without anything to do at home all day long. Nobody to clean up after. Nobody to cook for. I know it's a rough life, parents. But... We're praying for you. Our kids, uh, they don't back to school, so pray for them. Keep them in your prayers. And uh, let's worship the King together this morning. Amen. Just want to say real quickly, uh, man's camp is coming up, guys. I'm going this year. I'm able to go. And so uh, uh, there's sign-up sheet back there 
find out the details. It's like a Friday and Saturday morning, so get ready to go with me on that. I would like to say thank you for all your expressions for my birthday on the 23rd of July. And uh, all of you made it such a success. I was so surprised by everything, the mayor and his wife being here and so on. And uh, just God bless you. Some of you I knew gave me things, and so I, I gave you a, 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 or a thank you card's on its way. Many of you gave through the church. I have no idea who did what. So to all of you who anonymously uh, donated towards me, thank you so very much. I appreciate your gift, uh, your, your gifts, your thoughtfulness. Uh, your faithfulness to the house of the Lord. Because it's not all about me. It's about Jesus. Amen. And because of the sun set us, is setting us free, we're free indeed. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. My brother. Uh, by the way, Backpack Sunday, do you realize that Wayne and Lynn had to leave church and go shopping? <laughs> awesome. Can you imagine being called by God to go shopping? What a horrible thing, Lynn. What a horrible thing. I know she despised going. No, not no. Pastor, I don't think they heard you there. I said she had to go shopping. Shopping. Yeah. 24 more backpacks. They had to go out and purchase and then stuff real quickly. We ran. We were running out and they went and uh, brought it in. So because of that, we went over budget. So this morning, if you, if you want to give a little extra towards the backpack Sunday, thank you. We went over budget, but we'll, we'll get that covered. And we appreciate it. 124 back. That's awesome. Thank you. 124 back. Thank you. Filled up, ready to go. Hallelujah. We're so delighted. Thank you for your faithfulness and your giving in that. God bless you. Now, Brother Craig. <laughs> now, God bless you. Worship Hallelujah. The Lord. Come on. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. That when two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of it. So we thank you right now, God, for your faithfulness to do just that. But we come to spend time in your presence, to lift you high, to magnify your name, to glorify you with our hearts. Be exalted in this house, Lord Jesus. Be exalted, God, in this house, God. Be exalted among your people. We bless your name. Let's sing together. I have heard a sound. Come on. I have heard a sound.
a different song, but I just want to go this direction for a moment. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the 
would say, rise up, rise up, church. Speak victory over the darkness. Speak the presence of your heavenly Father to break every bondage and to loose those that are abound. Speak up, stand up, show up, be the vessel of righteousness I've called you to be, and I will empower you to be the overcomer which I have promised you would be through Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. 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 Let's, uh, I just feel uh, it's time to be a little bit uh, honest with, with ourselves. I just, uh, how many have uh, come in to the, to the house today and, uh, Jesus. How, how many came in today just kind of thinking, you were kind of hoping that God would do something great, but you were kind of doubting and just kind of like, here we go, another service, and you wanted something, but really in your heart, you weren't really expecting and just kind of like, it's just a, another day, another week. Anybody uh, since that when you, when you came in the house? Jesus. Let's just take a moment to ask God's forgiveness for that. Let's take a moment just to repent of maybe a, maybe feeling that way. And let's just let him kind of do what he wants in our hearts, okay? Father, we come before you. And God, we just confess, you know, those in the room that have felt that way. God, we ask your forgiveness for maybe our lack of faith or even our lack of expectancy that you truly will do something in the in the service today. Yes, Lord Jesus, my God. God, maybe forgive us for our unbelief. Lord, draw us to you. God. God, we want to expect things from you. 
We know that you are at work. We know that you love us. Yes, Lord. But God, maybe it's been a little bit since we've seen supernatural things. And, and God, we don't want to, you know, that Thomas had to see to believe. And, and even the Israelites, they saw you do incredible things. But they still kind of ended up doubting. And so, God, we just want an encounter with you today that it would be cool to see something with our eyes, but God, most importantly, we want to experience something in our hearts and in our spirit, even in our minds, an encounter with you today Jesus. that will rekindle the joy and the excitement in our hearts for you. Yes, Lord Jesus. That will revive us, God, to be where you want us to be and to do what you want us to do and to think the way you want us to think. Do we believe that God can do miracles? Amen, amen. Anybody in the room today need a miracle in your life? If that's you, whether it's a physical miracle, a financial miracle, maybe relationship miracle, maybe a spiritual miracle, if you need God to do something supernatural in your life, Jesus. in your faith, I'm going to ask you just to extend your hand and just, you're saying unto God, God, here I am. I have a need. I need you to supernaturally do something in my life. And you can even tell them what that is. Is it healing? Tell them. God, you know I've been suffering in this area. God, you know where it hurts. God, you know the diagnosis. And we also read in your word that you knit us together in our mother's womb and you do all things well. You are sovereign God. And I pray now that healing would come to bodies now. Supernatural healing. Holy Spirit, sweep through the house. Yes, Lord. Thank and take you. away pain. Take away symptoms of disease. Signs of sickness. Feelings of, of infirmities. God, bring healing to the innermost being of those cells of the body in Jesus' name, and we just take that authority, Jesus, that you told those disciples that we read about, we take that authority that you've given to us, and we speak now you, healing, just say that with me, healing in Jesus' name. Say it again, healing in Jesus' name. You might need to declare that over yourself. Put your hand where it hurts or where that ailment is. And say, healing come now in Jesus' name. We can pray for ourselves. Absolutely. And we just believe that. Lord, open ears in Jesus' name. God, bring strength to bodies in Jesus' name. Someone that's been having a headache, it's gone now in Jesus' name. Thank you. Just speak the name of Jesus over the headache. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Take a deep breath, those that uh, may have some things going on with lung things. Just take a deep breath and just say Jesus. We just declare that name, name above all names. Jesus. There's power in Jesus' name. Demons flee at the name of Jesus. Now, there's some uh, that need spiritual touch from the Lord. Just say the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we declare your name, Jesus. We command darkness. We command demonic activities and demonic oppression to go in Jesus' name. Thank you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and fill that place. Our minds, our hearts.
God, we pray that you would restore. There's some in the room that right now that are experiencing grief. God, even when we walk through difficult situations, we read in Psalm 23, we're not going to fear yes, because Lord. we're going to remember that you are with me. Yes, Lord. You are the great shepherd and it says your rod and your staff, they comfort me. How does it comfort? Because they protect. You protect us from the attacks of the enemy. God, bring peace where there seems to be sorrow. And would, would you let them sense your presence with them to know that you are there? God, maybe even speak a word to them to help them through this time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, right now there's some that are worried and stressed about finances. You are Jehovah Jireh. If that's you, just declare the name Jehovah Jireh. He is yes, Lord. the Lord who yes, provides. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. And those in this room right now that are stressed and worried about financial things, right now you have a decision to make. You can either continue to think about that the situation and you can continue to worry and try to handle things in your own strength, or you can make an intentional decision now to release the situation to God and say, God, I don't know how, but I know who, and that's you, and you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide, and you will meet my needs, and so now I'm not going to try to figure out how this is going to look. I'm simply going to trust you to take care of the situation, help me to do my part, and God, you do your part. Now just give that to him. Just give it to him and just thank him now for what he's going to do. Yes. Thank you now, God, for what you're going to do. Thank you now, God, that you're bringing provision. Thank you, God, that your promises of your word is that you love us. That you love us and that you're going to take care of us. God, we don't want worry. We don't want our faith to be divided. We don't want to be like Peter as he stepped out of the boat and he looked around at the waves and it began to sink. We want to keep our focus on you. And right now you're calling us to a decision to either focus on you or to make, or continue to just go down the path that we're going. Friend, what will you decide right now? Jesus. God, as it was stated in the Old Testament there, by your servant, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. You may need to just declare that over yourself and over your family and over the situation. And then also the phrase that comes to mind, anybody in the house that uh, you've been praying a lot about things, but it's been silent kind of like, what, God, are you there? Just show me by, by raising your hand. Where are you at? You've been praying in just a season of silence. Okay? This phrase that came to mind, that I, I remembered last night, but it just came again. Just be reminded that many times the teacher does not speak when a test is happening. Come Remember on. school time? He had a question. The teacher's like, I can't say nothing. Yeah, it's test time. So and could it be right now that you're just in a season of test? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Take the test. We're going to take the test. We're not going to just write our name on it and give up. We're going to put our name on it. We're going to read the question. We're going to face the situation. Yeah. We're going to kick fear in the face. We're going to ask God for his help. And we're going to boldly take the test and do our best. It's going to be all good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
you, Lord. Be encouraged by that this morning. God, I pray for those that are going through a season test, that you would just help them to continue to not go off their emotions, but just do truth. Thank you, Lord. And just take one step at a time. God, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Are you glad you came today? Amen, amen. God, we just, aren't you glad that he Praise hears the us? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you glad that he's an intimate God that yeah. has, he's a God of relationship, isn't he? Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. God, there's someone in the room, too, that's going through difficulty in relationship right now. I just kind of sense that. And Lord, whatever the situation may be, you are a restorer of relationship. Yes, Lord. In fact, Jesus, that's why you came and died, is to restore relationship between Jesus. us and the Father. Jesus. You're all about that. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So God, restore the relationship. Bring answers, solutions in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We pray for Pastor Land as he comes in just a moment to, to speak your word to us. You are awesome. Open our ears now, God, yeah. to hear. God, let it go into our minds and help us to process and think and understand what's going on. And now, Lord, we open our hearts and our spirit that it would go down into our hearts because from our hearts we act. And we want to be doers and not hearers of your word. And so thank you now for speaking to us in the way that we need and what we need to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, it's good to, again, see each one that's here. Um, we want to take a moment. This is the first Sunday of the month. This is Mission Sunday. And uh, just want to kind of quickly go over where, you know, each each month our budget that we have for this year is about $2,291.67. Okay? That's what our monthly budget is for us to meet our missions needs that we have okay and so um and in july we were at 1356 dollars uh some months we were at 21 so it kind of averages out but that's about where we're at if you take a look right there uh, there's our july our total giving so far we're at 13 grand uh, 920 and so our, our gold balance is right there and so uh dan and joy west uh, are those that the missionaries that we're going to just quickly we're going to pray for them there in Spain and uh, just making a difference for the Lord there and uh, and guys we we support a number of different missionaries on a monthly basis and so that's how these missionaries go is they raise support from different churches different uh, churches like ours say we can offer you uh, thirty dollars a month or fifty dollars a month and. They go around to different churches and they do that. They put it together in a fund and that's how they're able to go then and uh, pay for their rent and different things like that with just the support of all of us in different churches working together to help them get the gospel out. So knowing that you can be encouraged to know that you personally, as you give the missions, you're making a difference in the lives of yes. people in Spain. Right. That's right. People right. in Spain are coming to know Jesus and they're growing in their relationship with Jesus because you are financially giving and helping those missionaries, okay? So we just want to continue to thank you uh, for, for your giving. And uh, in fact, um, Eileen, if you have a, a video, uh, quickly we want to watch a video of some of the refugees and what's going on with some of the refugees uh, overseas and how God is working and doing great things in their lives and so if you have that can you can you roll that that video for us for years refugees have been coming to greece mostly because it's the first stop to europe that was one of the things that that brought us to greece to begin with However, in the past year and a half, two years, we have seen an influx of refugees coming from war-torn nations, primarily Syria and Iraq. Their journey is extremely dangerous. 
Um, we have been out to the island of Lesbos when the boats have come in and helped people off the boats. We have had numerous people come through who have, their rafts have overturned and they've lost three and four children in the water. We left our country to save our lives, but during the first leg of our journey, I lost my son. Now, no one can help me. ISIS took our family and split it apart. There's a lostness and an emptiness that we often hear from many of the refugees that we have spoken to and gotten to know over the period of, of a year, year and a half, some of them. And it's our place to, to reach out to them. And some of them are even open to, to the gospel. And uh, we've seen God do a tremendous uh, work in so many lives. We had hundreds in here. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. And they started by just the humanitarian part just giving, you know, little bags of food, and then it, it spilled over into giving them clothing, and then we started having Bible studies, and more people were coming in and getting saved, and, and so then we started having um, services here, and it was so exciting, just in this room alone, sometimes we'd have over 100 people, and they'd be just shoulder to shoulder, and they'd be hearing the gospel. We see people come to Christ almost on a weekly basis. And they've, uh, they've come to understand uh, who Christ is because of the religious freedom that exists here. For so many years, there have been missionaries that have gone to these Middle Eastern countries. And they've never seen one person come to the Lord. And now they are coming to the Lord. And we have led so many in the sinner's prayer. It's just been an amazing experience. We just thank the Lord for what he's doing. Yeah. How many know that... Uh, God, um, God has called us to love people. Amen. And I've heard a lot of people talk about refugees and everyone's got their own take. But how many know that as Christians, it's not our job to judge. Mm -hmm. That's right. God's called us to love all Amen. people right. as he's loved them. And he's doing a great work in everybody's life. Right? Mm -hmm. Discrimination is not a God word. That's right. That's right. That's right. Love is a God word. Right? Yeah. And so... Let's just take a second just to pray for this, to, for the West and, and those people around the world, the missionaries. God, we lift up uh, the West to you. And I pray that you continue to bless them in their efforts and in their assignment that you've called them to. Let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit in the land of Spain, in the country of Spain. Lord, do amazing things. Bring people to know you as their Lord, but also as their Savior. And God, we also pray for these refugees, Lord, as families are being destroyed by, by evil. Lord, would you protect their hearts, and would you, would you protect them, and would you reveal yourself to them in a powerful way? Yes. Those people that are helping refugees uh, and different ones across the world, uh, give them the resources, the strength. And to, to know what to do and how to help them and, and protect them. And, and God, we even take a moment to even lift up terrorists to you. God, Saul was a terrorist yeah. for you. Yeah. And you did not give up on him. And you, on that road to Damascus, he had an encounter with you that took him from being a terrorist and a persecutor of Christians and of people. And you softened his heart, and God, you changed his name to Paul, and you used him in a powerful way where we've got your word. A lot of it was written through him. And if you can do that for him, you can do that for others. As long as they have breath, there is hope. And God, I pray now that there would be a mighty outpouring of your spirit yes. in these terrorist camps where angels would show up, where you would show up, God, to them in a powerful way, and that you would reveal truth to them, that you would show them that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and the lies that they've been believing would be extinguished now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Jesus. God, have your way 
be done in their lives. And we just thank you, God, for what you're doing to our, with our missionaries all over the world. We pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And again, real quick, just want to make mention to you that Good News Club, we are, we're starting out. We've got an opportunity. We've been doing it for the last nine years. You're aware of it. On Thursdays, uh, after school, it's early release at, at Jamaica Elementary School. Uh, we're going to go in there for an hour and a half, and we're just going to get the good news to them. Uh, we've been, the superintendent has allowed every elementary school to have a Bible club on campus in the elementary school. That's and a big, Pastor B. It is a big thing. It's big. And it would be a sin for us not to participate in that opportunity. If we don't participate in that, you know how I view it? We're, we're spitting at God in the face, really, and saying, you know what? Because he's given us a commission, right? Yeah. Yeah. To go and to tell and make disciples. And yet, if we don't participate, you know, if our church isn't involved in this, we're just like, God, forget about what you've got to say. And I don't want to be that way. Amen. So if you're here and you'd like to help us with that, we sure could use your help. So talk to me afterwards, and, um, and we'll help you with that. Also, there's going to be, uh, real quick, just a, a, a thing where we're going to bless Jamaica. Um, I went to a meeting this last week at Calvary Baptist, and... Uh, they're doing a big, they want to bless all this, all the schools and they're asking all the churches to help them because this is bigger than just one church. This yeah. is a God thing. And so they're going to 10 different schools, 10 different projects that those schools need. And, um, and so they're hoping to get groups of different ones from different churches to adopt a school and adopt a project and together as the body of Christ make a difference in our community by blessing our schools. How many yeah. think that could be a, a very yeah. cool thing? Yeah. And so we're, we're going to adopt Jamaica. There's 10 things on there, but I did sign us up for four things, painting curbs and poles and doors and changing sweeps under doorways. And there's, you know, painting the nurses station. They just, there's a lot that needs to be done. And this is going to happen at the beginning of October. And I'm going to share more as we get closer to that day, but put that in the back of your mind. It's going to be a Saturday that we work for a few hours just to go over there and just let them know abundant grace believes in you. And we're here Amen. to support our, that. Um, Pastor mentioned earlier about the backpacks. Yeah. Uh, we were able to give away 124 backpacks, which is wow. phenomenal. Uh, we, we were a blessing to them. And uh, going into last week, we were about $100. Uh, we were at about 90, 85 or 90, 95% of hitting what we've already purchased for those 100 backpacks. And it's about $100 made 10%. So um, we were between 50 and and $100 away from hitting that goal, I believe. But then we had to go out in the middle of it because we, I mean, could you believe the attendance we had? Uh, was that awesome? Yeah, Standing awesome. room, people were on the steps, you know? So we had to go and, and the Keltons went out and bought more, bought 20 more backpacks. The bill for that came to $490 for the supplies and 20 more backpacks. Okay, so we're roughly about 500, 550, between five and six hundred dollars, I think, um, shy of covering those expenses. And so, if if you would consider, um, you know, being a part of that, um, that would be awesome. And uh, and we just know that God's going to meet those needs. So um, it was it was a Amen. great great thing, Pastor Lamb. Nice. So Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you know that God meets every need according to his riches and glory by Christ yeah, Jesus? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just calling you today as our ushers prepare to receive the morning tithe and offering. Look, my friends, you've trusted the Lord with your eternal salvation. Why not trust him with your finances also? Um, it always amazed me. We can trust him to save us. But we can't trust him sometimes with a pocketbook. And uh, it, that just kind of amazes me. Uh, trust the Lord. Give to the Lord what he asks of us. He asks the tithe uh, that he may be glorified in his work. God doesn't need our money. He needs our faithfulness. And if you're judging him faithful for your eternal salvation, how about judging him faithful for your finances? Someone said, well, Pastor, I can't afford to pay my tithe. Well, I can't afford not to pay my tithe. And uh, the fact of the matter is, 
I have to live below my income so that one day when I retire, I can have some money saved up, laid aside for the rest of my life. How many of you know that sometimes we act like the government, we spend more than comes in? How many of you know that's wrong? How many of you know that's wrong? Okay, so I'm just saying, if you're not, if you're not operating your money right, Maybe you need to look at your budget and you need to see. You know, you gotta have every new little whoop, whoop stitch that comes down the line. Knock it off, back off, live below your income so that one day you can live on the residue that you saved. And be faithful to the Lord with your tithe in the in the interim. Because friends, that's where it's at. Be faithful to him. He'll always be faithful to you. Come quickly, ushers, if you would please, those helping today. And uh, we're going to take our offerings in our hands and ask the Lord's blessing. I've got a few minutes uh, to share with you this morning the Word of God. We're going to do that together. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we give you the praise, the honor, the glory for your mercy and your grace. God, today we declare that you are always faithful. We pray, O oh Lord, that you bless those and help us to come into obedience, to be faithful with the time and offering unto your word. God, um, challenge us this day. Those who have not begun yet to tithe, help them to see that it's an important part of their obedience to the Lord. And God, bless them abundantly in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we take this moment to pray for Sister Eva, whose father passed away just this last week. And we pray for Jesse and Eva, God, even now, that you will strengthen them and minister to their entire family. In the precious, holy name of Jesus, we give you glory. People, God say yeah. Yeah. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. just within a mile or two of where we're meeting, but I'm not going. Just just in case some of you were snickering and going, oh yeah, oh, meetings, uh-huh, right, yeah, right, no. No, we're going to do the business of the church there. And uh, there will be thousands and thousands of people joining, uh, so uh, would you just uh, be in prayer that things will go well? There's a whole cadre of people who have gone with uh, supplies and everything to set up the convention center, all of that kind of thing, so just remember us and while you remember that, uh, we've been asked to pray for a Reverend uh, uh, Rubik Tumanyan and 10 key churches in Armenia in the Assemblies of God. 10 churches in the nation of Armenia. And pray for them that God will continue to minister to them. Also in Kenya, our, our missions letter that came out said uh, uh, 10 years ago there was a disputed uh, uh, presidential election and over a thousand people were killed in the streets mm -hmm. and uh, they're in turbulent times right now Kenya and we need to pray there for the people uh, there are 3,800 AG churches and about 1.3 million people in Kenya that claim the name of the Lord full gospel believers in the assemblies there besides other Christians just pray that God will minister mightily 
in their behalf. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I, I want to speak to you this morning for just a few minutes about intentional forgiveness. Forgiveness is a wonderful thing. It relieves you of guilt. It relieves you of shame. Did you ever, as a child, do something and um, suddenly it came to you, I did wrong? And then you had to fess up to it. I remember one day my mom sent me to the store for whatever it was, bread, milk, whatever. Um, you see, I was just a little guy, so I had to be about five or six. My brother was just a baby. And I went and I had three pennies left over. And there was this blue popsicle that I wanted real bad. And I bought this blue popsicle for three cents. Now, I, I know I'm older than many of you, but some of you are older than me. But I came home, but the evidence was right there. Blue lips, blue tongue. My mama says, um, the change, three cents short. What happened? Now, I could have lied and said I lost the three pennies, but I didn't. I said, I bought a popsicle. She said, did you have my permission to buy a popsicle? I said, no. She said, son, you must always get permission before you do something like that. And I learned a lesson. It's better to have permission to do something than it is to get caught short. And I, I, want, I want you to realize and understand today that when my mother said to me, I forgive you for that, son, just don't do it again. I felt great relief because I've been caught in a trap. That blue popsicle called my name. It was my favorite color of blue, like a turquoise blue. It was raspberry. I remember the flavor. It was so sweet so <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, forgiveness is sweeter and nicer than retaining a sin and trying to set on it. If you set on a sin that you retained, it's like setting on a tack. It will, you will eventually get the point. <laughs> Some of you, about lunchtime, got to go, oh, yeah, I understand that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 1 we're looking at this portion of scripture. Sometimes I have had theological battles in my mind, haven't you? At some points in my mind, I've wondered, are we the only ones who really believe in the true God? Is what we preach and teach and live and believe, is that correct? Or is Jesus just another way to God? And there are other ways, other roadmaps, other pathways, other understandings and so forth to the truth of the word. And as I, I thought and studied and prayed over the years, of course I came to the conclusion that the word of God is true and what he has said about his revelation of his love, mercy, grace, and forgiveness to us is absolute truth. And, and it has impinged upon my life to the point of bringing me that call of God to deliver the gospel to hearts and lives, to let people know there truly is forgiveness for sins. And as I think about it, as I think about it, there are people in this world who want to do everything in their power to keep God off their backs and keep themselves out of his attention because then they can just live their lives with no pressure on them whatsoever. And there are other people who are trying to please God in some manner so that he gives them special benefits. And I want you to know that God cannot be hidden from. And everybody said. Amen. And God cannot be impressed. I remember when we went to the first assembly of God church that we attended when I was about 13. There was a, a person, uh, a family in the church that told our pastor uh, they, they were the largest missions giver in the entire church. And they didn't like the fact that my mom and my aunt played guitars that I, and I played the drums and that my mom played tambourine. And they went to the pastor and they said, Brother Miller, you need to stop Sister Blair from playing that tambourine. Don't mind so much the guitars. But honestly, the tambourine just gets on my nerves and you need to tell her to stop. And Brother Miller looked at them and said, realizing that they were the largest missions givers in the church. And they pulled that on him. You know, we are the largest missionary givers in the church. Nice. And he goes, uh, well, I believe that the Lord sent the Blairs here. And uh, personally, I like her tambourine, and she knows how to keep the beat. And 
and uh, she's not playing it all over the place, you know, but she, she knows how to fit it in with the music and so on and so on. Goes when to play, when not to play. That's a big deal about a tambourine, right? Yeah. When you play it, when you don't play it. Um, <clears throat> and he said, I, I think we'll just keep it the way it is. And you know those people took their missions money and left the church? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and uh, you know what? Pastor asked my mom to lead the youth, teach a youth class lead the missions and so forth, and with just simple tacos, she raised thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars over the many, many years that they were there for missions. I, I can't tell you how many years we get four, five, six, ten thousand dollars $10,000 for missions on silly tacos. Yeah. By the way, tacos are not silly. Yeah, but, but you know what I'm saying. It, it, it's like God showed up and showed off and goes, I like tambourines. <laughs> I think that's cool. So let me, let, me, let me continue. The idea of forgiveness is an idea of being released. Do you recognize that today in the sound of my voice and through the video that we're sending out on Facebook right now, there are people who formerly were involved in drugs, but because of Jesus Christ, their sins have been remitted, they are forgiven, and the sin and the guilt and the shame that they felt as failures, drug addicts, has fallen off of them. They've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people who got into fornication and adultery and sexual sins and homosexuality that had that in their former lives who now sit among us with a proud understanding that whom the sun sets free is free indeed and there remains no more guilt or shame. Now you say, weren't you that? Yes, they were. And so are, were many of us. But the fact of the matter is, whom the Son sets free is free not only from their sin, but they can rightfully not come under condemnation because their guilt and their shame have been washed away with their sins. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Christianity is not about trying to impress God with how good you can be. It's not about trying to run from God so he won't correct you. It's about being open to him so he can do the forgiving in our hearts which we so desperately need. Now hear the word of the Lord. I, I, I've got a lot to say, a little time to say. Would you just give me a little bit more time? It says this. For the law, the writer to the Hebrews, again, we do not know the author. Many people argue back and forth. Some think it was this one, that and the other. Who knows? God knows, but it's okay. They wrote according to the movement of the Holy Spirit in their lives. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. The, the very sacrifices, the blood sacrifices which were given, could only cover over their guilt for a season. Every year, they had to go back to the temple, take that precious, perfect lamb from their flocks, or one that they could purchase. And the blood of that lamb would absolve them for the prior year's sins. But it could do nothing about their conscience. Mm -hmm. Could do nothing about the guilt that they had borne. Could do nothing about the shame that they had been involved with. It only covered over their sins for that previous year. It was not a down payment on next year. It was a payment for last year. And so they would leave knowing they would fail again. They'd blow it again. Maybe not intentionally, maybe intentionally, who knew? But there was always next year when they would bring another lamb and get it covered over again. The difference between atonement, I've said this before, some of you remember, the difference between atonement in the Old Testament and atonement in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, it means to cover over. In the New Testament, it means to erase and wash away. 
It's kind of like when your puppy poops on your carpet and you go and find a towel or a throw rug and you throw it over the pile and say, good, it's good. The smell's still there. The pile's still there. But it's covered over. And even if you apply Febreze, and this is not a commercial, <laughs> generously on that little pile, it's still there, folks. And that's what atonement in the Old Testament means. The blood of bulls and goats will cover over the sins of the people. But in the New Testament, when it talks about the blood of Jesus washing away our sins, it means picking up the poop, washing the spot, apply the Febreze, and there's never any evidence that there was ever a mess on that carpet erased by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's New Testament atonement. And so we come back to this point and it says all of those yearly sacrifices could not take away or make those who came, who approached and brought the sacrifice, could not make them perfect. For then, verse 2, then would they not have ceased to be offered? The question is asked. If it could make them perfect, then they, they should cease the offerings. But it never did. Watch this verse uh, as it continues. For the worshipers once purified would have had no more conscience of sin, sins, but in those sacrifices, there's a reminder every year of sins, for it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take them away, take away sins. Blood of bulls and goats couldn't do it. We needed something stronger, something greater, something more powerful. Listen carefully this morning. <laughs> Verse number five. Therefore, when he, Christ, came into this world, he said this, and it's quoting now, Old Testament scriptures, listen. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, speaking to God. The psalmist was speaking to him. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, a but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins you had no pleasure. Burnt offerings meaning blood sacrifice and sacrifices meaning a bloodless sacrifice. There were various offerings that were given to God. Then I said, and then another quote, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Volume is a word that means the little bead that was on the end of the rod that held the scrolls together. Two rods rolled the scroll on two rods and the little beads that held were screwed at the top, attached to the top and bottom that kept the thing together. So he said in the entirety of the Old Testament, in the entirety of the law, the Psalms, the prophets, in the entirety of the revealed word of God held together so it wouldn't fall apart. He said in its entirety, it's written of me. Watch this again. Uh, where am I now? He says, uh, oh yeah. Come on, come on. In the volume of the book, verse 7, it is written of me to do your will, O God. He said, that is the only thing that I came to do is the will of my heavenly father. I came to accomplish his will. What's his will? His will is that none perish but come to ever, but everyone to come to an everlasting life. Yeah. That's the base will of God. And if you're sitting here this morning and you're full of a guilt or a shame about your sins, there's one way to remedy that, and that's submit yourself to God, who will not beat you up, who will not condemn you, who will not beat you over the head, but who will delve deep into your heart and your spirit to erase your sins and take away your guilt and your shame and cause forgiveness to flow powerfully through you on a continual basis. The reality of Christianity is that you can indeed live without guilt or shame before God. Hallelujah. If there's anyone who had the right to condemn us, it would be God. But he chooses not to condemn. He chooses to forgive and set free. Aren't we glad? And watch this a little further, please, in verse number 8. Previously saying, or quoting again from the Old Testament, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you did not desire nor had pleasure in them which are offered according to the law. 
nothing wrong with those sacrifices. They did them accord, according to what they knew and understood and according to the law of Moses. But that wasn't God's ultimate design. Listen carefully, please. Verse 9. Then he said, again another quote, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. Now, he takes away the first that he may establish the second. In other words, he's going to close out the Old Testament covenant because he brings in a new covenant which is much more effective in the hearts and the minds of people. Watch again carefully, please, with me this morning. Then he said, Behold, I come to do your will. Takes away the first, may establish the second. Verse 10. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Say once for all. Once for all. Sanctified means to be set totally apart for the use of God. To take something from an improper use and to place it over in the position of a proper use. From an improper use to a proper use. Have you ever found that your child took one of your nice knives from your silverware set? And used it to screw something into a wood project in the garage? And the end of that wonderful knife is... You ever seen it? Or did you ever take a fork and try to stick it in a toaster to get out a piece of bread? You go, <laughs> no, I've never done that. Thank God I know more about electricity than that. Unplug it first, guys. Unplug it first, okay? Have you ever used something for the wrong purpose? You said, surely I can't find my whatever, so this will work in its place. And you go, oh, I've, I've stuck metal things before in places they shouldn't be and they I stuck a drill in a wall one time my boss said drill here I did and the bit went right in and there was a three cable wire I drilled exactly into asking are you sure he said yeah drill here I drilled and that drill bit came out in three different directions it was all over the place don't use a tool in the wrong place and everybody said Amen. no paper clips in outlets You'll, you'll have burnt fingers, I assure you. Not that I've done it. My nephew did once. But listen, don't use the wrong thing for the wrong, uh, the right thing for the wrong purpose. God said he's going to sanctify you. He's going to take you from doom and destruction to life everlasting. He's going to take you from a heart filled with gloom and despair and bring you to hopefulness and transparency in the spirit of the Lord. God wants to set us free. He wants to totally set us free. Now watch this. In verse 11. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Mm -hmm. But this man, Jesus Christ, this, the writer of Hebrews says, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. God's not going to do anything else about sin. The battle is over. Hallelujah. Hello? That's right. The battle is over. Well, Pastor, I'm still battling. You're, you're battling something that's already been won for you. You, you. You're fighting against something that is trying to declare its strength in your life. And all the while, the Spirit of the Lord says, Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes, Friends, I tell you this morning, there's something more powerful than guilt and shame. And it's the intentional forgiveness of God. Why does He set us free? It's because He wants to give us the authority and the power to be free and to live free. Hallelujah. To be free and to live free. Not just saying it, but giving us the power and the authority to be that and to do that. Amen. Struggle, my friend, is with our choices, not with the ability of God in our hearts and in our lives. Notice a little further, please. It says this, 
and, and from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. Verse 14, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. It's the gerund form of the word. We are in a process of sanctification. We're in a process daily renewing our minds by the word of God. We're in a process daily of seeing God bringing us out into victory, unto victory. Do we miss it sometimes? Sure. Anybody ever had a lapse in your faith? Yeah. Anybody have a lapse in your intentions? Yeah. Anybody who's had a lapse in, in, in your trying to do what is right and proper? Sure enough. But the fact of the matter is, let Christ arise within you. You stir yourself up. David often said, soul, rise up and praise the Lord. There are times you and I don't feel like worshiping. Hello? Am I, am I alone in, up here? There are times we don't feel like doing what is proper. There are times we don't feel like holding back a, an ugly word. Have you ever made a smart remark and hurt someone's feelings? No. And I confessed to you the other day I did to Alika. We were talking about something or other, and she said something to me, and it just ticked me off. It did. And I, and I rarely have done it. Rarely. She's nodding her head, by the way. And I said something back to her that, that was just hurtful. And oh my. It was one of those moments like when I used to say to Alika when we first got married. This spaghetti is great. It's almost like Mama used to make. <laughs> Don't say that. Ever. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Use some wisdom, okay? The fact of the matter is I spoke quickly. And I stung her like a bee and got out of there. And, and it hurt her. And I, I had to apologize to her. And I had to uh, really make amends. And I'm sorry I did that. I apologize publicly. Right. But sometimes you don't have to say everything that comes in your head. You don't have to do everything that comes through your thoughts. You don't have to accomplish every idea that arises within you. You can rise up in your most holy faith and squash those things. Because you can control through the power of the Spirit of God and your decision. To do what is right and proper. God will empower that within your heart and within your life. By one offering perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Verse 15. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us after he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them in those after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds this, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. For where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. We don't need the blood sacrifices of the Old Testament because we've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Can you say amen? amen. That empowers us to rise up. That empowers us to press on. That empowers us to find victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I'm telling you about something that can be found in no other religion on the face of this earth. And that is the power and the ability of that intentional forgiveness of heaven. In that while we were yet dead in our sins and trespasses. And could not satisfy God's judgment. And could not satisfy his demands through the law to our lives. Yet Christ satisfied the whole law. And because he did, God said, I'll use his satisfaction of the law and apply it to you. And I will save you to the uttermost. And I will forgive you to the uttermost. And I will put in your life a forgiveness that is living and moving and powerful and constantly at work in your heart and life. Are you and I human beings still? Do we make mistakes? You betcha. But the Holy Spirit comes and says, you know what, that was wrong. Why don't you correct it right now? And we correct it, and God goes, good. Now let's get up and go on and move from here. Power of intentional forgiveness enables you and I to rise above. As I said before, there are people with various pasts in this room and in the, in the sound of our voice who have done things and been things that now... 
they would be ashamed of except for the blood of the Lamb has erased that and cleansed them. And they can truly say, I'm a child, a son, or a daughter of God. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to the Lord. Hallelujah. That's power. That is empowerment, friends. Hallelujah. I can look at you. And I can forgive you maybe for an offense against me. And that's one thing. But when you look in the face of a holy God. And he says, because of Jesus Christ, I forgive you. Man. That empowers you to rise up. And go forward. And then verse 19. Now look. Here, just a little bit of a background, please. In the temple area, there was the outer court. Just about anybody, the brethren could come in there. And people seeking the face of the Lord could come in and so forth. And, and, and then there was the inner confines. And in those places, uh, uh, the men could come in. And the priests could come in. And sacrifices were offered and so forth. But way in the back of the holy place, the outer court, sectioned off the inner court. And then there was the holiest of holies. This was the place in the Jewish faith. This was the place where the Ark of Covenant was in there. The presence of God was thick in there. And there was a heavy, heavy veil that was drawn across it, across the front of it. And only once a year, just once a year, the priest on assignment, the high priest on assignment, would take a little basin of fresh blood, not coagulated blood, not blood from last week's offering, but fresh blood. And he'd take that little basin of blood and he would go in that curtain and the other priest would stand there. No one wanted to look inside because there was the presence of God. It was too holy, too powerful, too mighty. It was, it was too much for people. And they would grasp the edge of that curtain to drug that just enough for the high priest to enter in. And when he went in, he would walk up to the Ark of the Covenant he hadn't seen since last year. And he'd take that base of blood and he would approach it. And man, he'd already, he'd already make, made his amends to God outside, but he, he dipped his fingers in that blood and he sprinkled it on the mercy seat. On the mercy seat. The, 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 the whole cover of the Old Testament. Two figures of the angels there with their wings spread and touching over the altar. And, 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 and that mercy seat is the same term that's used for Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And the blood was sprinkled upon that. And the, the sins of the people were forgiven for another year. And then the high priest looking around and maybe in the in the cloud of God's presence would back out and come outside. The people would cheer because again, God had forgiven the nation for their sins. It was Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. Let me tell you what, the day that Jesus died upon that cross, there was an earthquake. There was something that rumbled the country, rumbled the nation, rumbled the earth. And it was so horrible that walls cracked. People fell in the streets. The dead were raised, recently dead were raised again. And people saw them walking in the streets and were amazed at the resurrection power that was present. And right in that temple area, those priests hanging around in that area doing their, their, their daily chores. All of a sudden, the rumbling shook even the temple itself. And at that moment, that huge veil from top to bottom was absolutely split. They say that it was as thick as a man's hand, about five, six inches thick, the curtain was. And when it was ripped, I don't know anybody, I mean, guys by special training can rip phone books in half. I, I had a 20-page phone book I ripped in half, half once, but I don't know about you guys. <laughs> but uh, big time, right? Uh, but you get a big thick one. There's a certain way to do it. You, you can do it. I've never tried it. But, well, I tried it once, but it didn't work, so I gave it up. But the fact of the matter is that veil was torn in two. And when it was torn in two and the rumbling and the, and the jumbling of everything, that thing parted. And the priests who had never seen in that place looked 
beyond that torn curtain and saw the holy of holies. My God, church, can you understand the impact of that upon their hearts and their lives? They were seeing into a place they were not allowed to see, and suddenly they could see it. And it represents to us that God opened the doors that separated us from him through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice. And we are allowed to come into the presence of God Hallelujah. in a way that never before was possible. This stirred in my heart all night as, I, as I, I finished up my notes last night and began to think about this and pray about this and so forth. And, and into the amazement that sin that had separated us was taken care of through the blood of Jesus Christ. That my guilt and my shame taken away so that I could be free in the Lord Jesus Christ. So all of us could be free. Watch the scriptures now, verse 19. Therefore, brethren, listen to this. Having boldness to enter not the holy place, but listen to this, the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have been given something the Old Testament saints longed for. The ability to approach a holy God. Friends, I don't know if you've ever been called before authority before. But if you have, you know the intense feeling in your heart. I was called to be a witness in a case once in just the local court down here. And they, and they said, answer yes or no. And I said, okay. And uh, they asked me some questions. I said, uh-huh. And the judge goes, please say yes or no. And I was so nervous. I wasn't on trial. I was a witness. And I was so nervous in the presence of this judge. And he's just a local magistrate. And they kept, finally the judge said, now, Reverend Blair, I've told you several times, say yes or no, <laughs> not uh-huh or nuh -uh. I was so nervous. And he's just a judge here, magistrate here. How is it that we can come before a holy God and act in a cavalier manner? How is it that we can approach a holy God who has every right to condemn us to hell forever and say, oh yeah, well, I'll do it my way, not your way. How is it that we can face a holy God and not be serious in our approach to him? And the writer of the Hebrews says, look, the veil has been torn from top to bottom. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, you have been allowed, authorized, to come into a place that Old Testament people were not allowed. And you are now allowed. Let me read it again, verse 19. Look, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. That's how we get in. By the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Having a high priest over the house of God, Christ is our high priest. Let us draw near with a true heart. Is your heart right with God? Do you have a true heart before the Lord this morning, friends? In full assurance of faith. I have an assurance in my heart. Have I always been, have I been perfect in my life? No. Have you been perfect in your life? No. But God's not looking at our perfection. He's looking at the perfection of Jesus Christ, his son. Amen. And then he's calling that perfection our perfection. Don't we have some kind of God? Hallelujah. Friend, hear the word of the Lord. Draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, forgiven of our sins, baptized in water, friends washed by the water of the word. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. I'm saved, not because I can keep the rules, I'm saved because Jesus kept the rules for me. Yeah. We are born again, not because of our yeah. abilities, but because of his ability. Hallelujah. We are redeemed Jesus. by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 
man. Thank the Lord. Holy man. God. Hang on, Glenn. You can finish this. Glory to the Lord. Let us hold fast that confession of our hope without wavering. He who promises what, church? Faithful. Again, he who is promised is faithful. Let us consider one another. In order to stir up love and good works. And that the verbiage that is used there to stir up means to incite to the point of action. And lately we have seen on the college campuses and so forth. People gather and, and they, they don't believe in something. They want to stand against something. want to riot against. And someone will incite a riot. Are you listening? To incite someone means to stir them up and get them going. Did you ever see in the store the guy with the display and he's selling, I don't know what, knives, pots and pans, special, whatever. And he's he's going, he's going to pretty soon. Who wants to buy this? Normally they're $180, but today and today only they're only $80. And not only that, but we'll give you a second set. And not only that, we'll give you the free little paring knife. In fact, we'll give you five little paring knives. All for $80. Such a deal. Everybody's going, take my money. Take my money. Take my money. He incited them. And then you get them home. I still find knives in my drawer in the original paper sleeve. And I'm going, why? I already had a set. <laughs> Inciting to action. And that's what this word in the Greek is saying to us. Let us consider one another in order to stir up or incite to love and good works. Praise you, Lord. My brothers, my sisters, love unconditionally those around you, and especially those who adversely come against you. Love those who intend evil against you. That doesn't mean you have to go, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. But act in love. They have a need to meet their needs if you can meet it. They have a need in their lives. Pray for them. Uphold them. Go by their house and do a drive-by prayer. No guns, please. But drive-by prayer. Bless so-and-so. I know, Lord, they've spoken against me. But, oh, my God, bless them. Oh, my God, draw them to you. Oh, my God, reveal yourself to them. Drive-by praying has a way of working powerfully. Let's hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. You promised is faithful. Let's consider one another. Order to stir up or incite to love and good works. Not forsaking. Would you hear this church? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Assembly in the Greek means a complete collection. Hmm. Assembly means complete collection in the Greek. Any of you who, who collect... Uh, I don't know, plates or figurines or whatever your collection is. Matchbook covers or pop bottle caps or, or bull rings or whatever you're collecting. I may look at it and go, what are they collecting? Those? But you may look at it and say, but there's a 1963 whatever that I really need in my collection to make it complete. That's what this word conveys. Complete collection. Nothing is missing. Nothing is missing. And look at the scripture. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of some. And there are people, I'm telling you right now, who have declared to my face, well, we no longer believe in the uh, uh, organized church, and so we're just staying home enjoying all the television preachers. Fully. You need help in the ER? Call one of your television pastors to see if they'll come down. But I know how to go to the hospital at 2 or 3 in the morning. Pastor Dean knows how to do that. We know how to respond to the needs. We know why. Because we're local pastors. We understand and we know. We're teaching and training art the same way. Had him in the hospital the other day. We called on, on Jesse, I think it was. And I said, uh, Brother, while Jesse's in surgery, I'm going to take you up, Art. We're going to make a call upstairs here of another person. Took him up. Why? Because I want to convey to Art what it's like to go and to make a hospital call. I want to teach and train while those moments are there. Friends, listen to me. Stir one another up yeah. to good works. So watch this. Assembling of ourselves. Some have said, well, Pastor, uh, you know, I, I just... Uh, 
I don't feel I need to go to church anymore. I'm just going to, I, you know, I've been a good Christian all my life, been in the house of faith, blah, blah, blah. And I can just, I, 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 I want to go camping every weekend. Oh, aren't you so special? <laughs> don't do that. Go camping when you need to go camping. But every blessed week, give me a break. Jesus shows up here. Why not you? Oh, I'm not preaching on the metal. Stop preaching on the metal. Watch out, watch out. <laughs> or maybe, maybe, I just want to, I just want to get on the lake. And, and, and church just prevents me from, now, now there are people who have to work, and there are people who need to be working at 11, 11.30, and they've left the service. But you know what? They were here for the first part. And faithfully are. And God bless them. When you got to work, you got to work. And I understand that. But the fact is, just to arbitrarily choose, well, I'm working on getting close to God. Oh, my. Well, you know, I just, I need a season where I'm just going to duck out and, and, and wait upon the Lord. Wow. No one's ever thought of that one before. And I'm not trying to make fun of it. If you know somebody who's, who's doing that right now, I'm not talking about them today. Okay? Don't go home and say, Pastor was talking about you. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Not forsaking the assembling ourselves together as a manner of some, but exhorting, lifting up, encouraging one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Look, friends, the day of the Lord is coming. Jesus. Coming soon. I don't know when he's coming back. I don't know when things are going to wrap up. I don't know when all this is going to uh, transpire or take place. But I know this. As long as I'm alive, I'm going to be in the house of faith. And I'm going to be here because you need to hear the word of God. And I need to hear from your hearts. Right. And we need to give to one another what God lays upon our hearts. Because amongst all of the words that I've spoken today... Holy Spirit has taken a key thought, a key phrase, and applied to your heart and made a reality to you. Look, I'm not preaching to the empty seats today. I'm preaching to the seats that are filled. I'm preaching to the hearts that are open. And this is against no one, but this is for us. Friends, we need to be in the presence of God's people. Because somebody's got a word for you, or you've got a word for somebody. That's right. Right. Or there's somebody that needs to see your smiling face instead of a frown. Someone needs something that you have in your heart and your life to encourage them and lift their hearts. Holy Spirit, breathe in this house upon our hearts. This morning, I tell you what I just feel. I just feel that we need to open the altars this morning. And there is something about the altar Something about that time in the presence of God. And I, I, I just sense, listen friends, let me ask you some questions real quickly. Is there something that's come up in your heart that's more important than your relationship with God? Is there something that you wake up thinking about instead of thinking about God? Is there something that's troubling you that you need a handle on? Only God can give you the handle. Is there something that is plaguing you, bothering you, messing with your life that you need a handle on? And I'm not, I'm not telling you that, that you're a sinner, that you're in, in, in danger of whatever. I'm just saying this. Prayer is something that works powerful within our hearts and our lives. Maybe you're here today and you've never made a confession of faith to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And this is the day you need. This is the day you need it. You, you sense it in your heart. You know it in your mind. This is the day you say yes to Jesus. This is the day. I, I remember, I knew in my heart when I was courting the leaf, I knew in my heart that the day that I said the words, I love you, I was committed. I went over the hill that day. You know what I'm saying? I could say, I like you, you're wonderful, you're beautiful, all those kind and wonderful things. But I knew the moment I said, I love you, and she would write in her letters, love you. I go, yay. Or I go, back at you. Or I go, wow. Or thinking about you, whatever. One day I was visiting her in Phoenix. And I sat on the couch. She sat on the, 
on the arm of the couch in her folks' home. And I looked up at her, and there was something that overwhelmed me. And this, this thing that she did in my heart, this confusion, this thumping of the heart, this quickening of the mind, this whatever it was that was possessing me, I finally came to the realization it wasn't infatuation. It was truly a dedicated love. And I looked into her eyes, beautiful blue eyes, and I said, Aletha, I love you. And when I said those words, that was a commitment for my life to her. Amen. But once I said it, it was so easy to say it again. Do you follow? <clears throat> Maybe it's time you say to Jesus, I surrender to you. Maybe this is the day where the cry of your heart is, God, I want to live in forgiveness. I want your intentional forgiveness to set me free. Not only from the guilt of my sin, but my shame, and whatever else that's been in my heart. And if you're that person today, I invite you also to be responsive to the Spirit of the Lord moving in your heart. But look, we're going to stand to our feet right now. Stand with me, please.